Hawks this weekend. They're known to cause some teams some headaches so far this season. How are you approaching the task this weekend? Yeah, look, they're playing some outstanding footy, so um, we certainly know what we're up against there. They've certainly turned their whole season around with the way they're playing. They're very good with the ball. They've certainly stiffened up around the contest. And, um, you know, they're a big challenge for a lot of teams. They've been a lot of good teams, especially at the MCG. So we know what we're up against. And, um, and we're going to have to really need to be at our best and, uh, and continue to play the way we're playing to get a result. What's the approach for James Sicily this weekend? Oh, look, he's an important player. I think a lot of teams put some time into him. We'll have a look at how we structure up. And I think that's his, you know, he's a big part of the game. There's no doubt about that. But what we do with him, we've still got our strategy to go through. We've still got three days before the game. So we'll work through what that looks like later today. Simon, a few weeks ago, it was a weekly question about what to do about Nick Dacos. Sicily's almost in that bracket now with what he's shown, especially the last couple of weeks. Does he need, you talk about structure, does he need a plan on himself or is it more about how your forward line works in terms of stopping a player like him being able to burst out like he does to such damaging effect? Yeah, we'll have, we'll have plans in all those areas, Rog. You know, it's something that you go into a game with multiple different plans up your sleeve and um, as a coaching group, we'll work out what our best strategy is to one, is to obviously nullify him but also to make sure our forward line functions in a way where we can score uh, and they both go hand in hand in a lot of ways and how you impact the game so we'll have multiple plans heading in we'll work out which is the best way to start the game um, but clearly he's an important player to us but you know we, we certainly like the way our forward line's functioning as well and how it's starting to look ahead of the ball so um, you know we, we've got to make sure we're prepared in all those ca in, for all those cases. What have you noticed about them they've, they've They've claimed a couple of massive scalps in the last couple of weeks. Have you noticed anything different about them? Oh, no. Oh, they've certainly stiffened up around the ball. Um, their mids are in really, really good form um, and they're getting good supply there. But they're also using the ball incredibly well. You know, they're taking a lot of marks against opposition and controlling the game with the ball in hand. So, um, you know, they're, they're really strong in a few areas of the game and they're much improved. You know, they're playing with great unity and connection and... Um, and a lot of spirits, so they're in really good form. They're, they're not a team that's, you know, certainly ranked where they are on the ladder. They're a team that's playing a lot better than that. Uh, Simon, court documents have emerged this week in regards to the club's dispute with Glenn Bartlett. I know the board released a statement already, but uh, is there anything you'd like to say on the matter? Ah, uh, not really. I think I've said for three years it's an irrelevant story to me. I think the club and I have been really clear on our stance of where we sit, see it. Um, absolutely rubbish that's been put in there um, and you know, I've been pretty clear with it and to be honest I, I just can't give it the energy that people want me to it's it's not something that I get too concerned about I've got a, a footy team to worry about and to coach a team and, and a footy club forward. Why, why do you think some people within the club had concerns about your behaviour at the time? You'll have to ask them it's absolute rubbish. Simon, just, just from a personal level, how does it, how does it impact you as, as you go through the, the stresses of the daily coaching and as you prepare for this week, having it been brought up again? Oh, look, it's disappointing to be brought up, but as I said, I, I've learned over time about what I give energy to. And the best thing I give energy to is to my players, to my footy club, to my team. And that's all I'm really worried about. And uh, that's all I've been worried about the whole time I've been coached at the Melbourne Footy Club. And um, these distractions will occur. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, it's sad in a lot of ways. Um, but I've learned to deal with it and we move forward and it's irrelevant to me. And um, it's been no different in the last 48 hours. Just, uh, just one more on the, on the Hawks. Um, another one of their weapons has been good with Guinness over the last couple of weeks. He's, he's done a lockdown job on a, on a couple of guys. Uh, how are you planning? And do you have any insight? I don't know, I remember if he played against you earlier in the year. Have you got any insight as to as to where he might go and how do you plan on, um, I guess, combating that? Yeah, look, he, um, you know, last, probably year before he played on uh, Ed Langdon and did a pretty good job. But in recent times, he's played on a variety of different players, not only outside players, but inside players. So he didn't play against us earlier in the year. So um, we're a little bit unsure where he'll set up, but we're certainly planned for him to have a role on someone and ultimately we'll try and use that to maximise an advantage in other phases of the game. So 
Um, you know, it's one, one is taking a player out of the game, but it's two how you set the ground up to, to get an advantage. And we'll certainly look at how we can do that. Goody, how's um, Ben Brown tracking and do you bring him in this week? Do you stick with Brody Grundy? What are your thoughts on that front? Yeah, look, Brownie's obviously missed a little bit of training in a game, so um, he'll come back this week. Hopefully, gets through training today by the by the VFL, and Tom McDonald will play his second game. Uh, Tommy came in; he was a little bit rusty on the weekend, but uh, he'll play another game in the VFL and start to build. So we're starting to get some options, so um, which we need. You know, we haven't we're not blessed with a lot of tools playing footy at the moment, so um, to get all those guys up and running will give us more options certainly at the AFL level. And and Bailey Fritch is a week away, so. We're starting to get some more options um, to, around selection in that part of the game, um, which we need to, um, because we need to have options going forward. So from that, we take the Brody Grundy or Peter's spot in your side this week? We haven't had that meeting yet. You know, clearly we went with Brody on the weekend. Um, really tough conditions um, you know, in terms of a slippery hot game of footy. It was, certainly wasn't a night for key forward to dominate, as we saw from either team. Um, there certainly wasn't a dominant forward on the ground. So we'll have a good look at that today at training, um, chat about it after and, and pick the team after that. As I said, we don't play till Sunday, um, but we'll continue to look at what's best for us at the moment. Last couple, thanks, everyone. Simon, you've said repeatedly through the season that, you know, wherever you've been at, if you come off a loss or win, it's not about where you guys are at that moment. It's about building towards being ready at the pointy end of the season. I'm wondering now we are, you know, we are there. How how do you feel that you're going, what is it now, two, three weeks out from finals? Oh, look, we feel like we've got a lot of momentum and we feel like we've really built through the back end of the year. You know, we won five in a row up until last week. We lost a really tight game that could have gone either way against a team that's won seven in a row. So we think we've built a lot of momentum through the season. And even from the weekend, you know, we're continuing to learn about our game and how we get better. And um, that's the art of building through the season is continuing to adjust and, and, and make change where you can get better. And um, we're no different from the weekend. So we think we've got some momentum. We think we've got a lot of stability in our team um, and some cohesion in the way that we play. Um, and we think we're going to you know, be able to forge ahead and give it a real good crack. What did you, what did you get sort of taking a step back and sort of looking at a more big picture, what did you take out of the Carlton loss? Oh, plenty. Um, you know, you saw, you saw two teams value very similar things in terms of the, the contest and defence and, um, you know, our ability to absorb a lot of, you know, inside 50s early was outstanding. We, we took a lot out of that. Um, and then we took a lot out of how we started to shift momentum as the game went on. Um, once again, the hallmark of our team all year has been the ability to, to reset itself and to keep coming in opposition. And, you know, in three times throughout the game, we were, you know, 12 to 18 points down in a low scoring affair. We were able to come back and, and nearly win the game. So there were certainly a lot of positives for us. Um, you know, early we learned a lot about, you know, the type of game that we need to set up early. Um, so we'll continue to, to get better in that, in that phase of the game.